The race to 5G is on, and the battle for talent is getting fierce. Welcome to 5G Talent Talk with Carrie Charles, a podcast dedicated to helping you face the future workforce head on. Navigate this challenging talent landscape with innovative strategies to attract, retain, and engage people in this new world of work, only here on 5G Talent Talk with Carrie Charles, CEO of Broadstaff Talent Solutions. Thanks so much for joining me today on 5G Talent Talk. I'm Carrie Charles, your host, and this is where we talk tech, talent, and all things telecom. And today I have with me a special guest. His name is Will Grendel. He is the CEO of Ascend Wireless Networks. Now today we're going to have an amazing conversation. First of all, you don't want to miss this. You just want to focus, make sure you're here with us because this is going to inspire you. Will, thank you for joining me today. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. It's definitely a pleasure. Will, you have really an incredible path to your seat Mm. today. I'd like you to share that with everyone because it is that in itself is an inspiration. Absolutely. I started in the industry in 2011 and I was just invited by what eventually be a business partner in to come in and help him really clean up some warehouse and some logistics in the Southeast. And it was kind of a part-time gig. And I went in, got to really get invested into and really figure out what this whole wireless space was from a warehouse uh, perspective. And through that time that I was there doing that, I really fell in love with the industry. It was different. Didn't know anything about it. And I was able to progress from that and decide, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna give this thing a year and not say no to anything they asked me to do. And I'm just going to follow that and see where it goes. For a whole year, everything they asked me to do, I continued to do it. I got to travel and do some things towards the Chicago area with some lighting projects. Came back, worked in Nashville kind of as a civil tech and started doing becoming a tower tech and learning the tower side. And about a year after that, um, the gentleman that brought me into the industry said, hey, I I really would like to go do something on my own. Would you want to go and do it with me? Well, at that point, I was 26 years old, didn't have a lot to lose (laughs) at that young of an age. And I was excited about it, an opportunity to really go create a business that I would love to work at, a business that I felt like I had impact and had a reason Started that business in 2013, which is Ascend. At day one, I was the project manager, the tower top technician, the foreman, the civil lead, the closeout manager, (laughs) payroll. I mean, we were everything. So we really got to learn everything from the bottom. And for the next three years, I was physically built every site that Ascend was put under their control. And it was a great experience to learn that. I mean, I never grew up and thought really that I was going to be a business owner. It was never that. I grew up in sports and I always was in more of a team aspect my whole life. Coming into the business world, a lot of that stuff just transitioned over to realizing that great companies have great leaders, but great leaders have great teams and great teams have great leaders. And not everybody's going to be the quarterback. Everybody else is important. Their their contribution and their training are all important. I never thought about, hey, let's build a great business. It was, hey, let's go see if we can actually make this work. For three years, we were on and off grinding, building all these sites. And then really our name got out there, our brand got out there, our work got out there. And we started getting invited and the opportunities to go direct. We went direct after six months of being in business. I went direct with Verizon and that was through my partner at the time, his vision and his connections that got us in the door and Ever since then, we've just really built this business that has a mindset that just to do business the right way, but also there's a way to do business a better way. This year in June, we celebrate our 10th anniversary. It's just been a journey. It's been amazing to watch it. And what I love about this industry and the path that I took was I can relate to every worker that we have because I was in that position at some point. I was on the road away from my family, away from my wife, away from my kids, I was in the hot of Florida. I was in the cold of uh, Tennessee and Nashville area. So I can relate at that point. But as I learned as a leader, 80% of a leader's success is their emotional intelligence. And so as we go through this and we built this business, it just really started flourishing and people just really wanted to be a part of this. As we are 10 years old this June, it's just amazing to see where we've been and where we are today and just really where we're going is exciting. What a story. I just get chills hearing that. 
introduce Ascend Wireless Networks. Who do you serve? What services do you offer? And also what markets? Yeah, absolutely. So Ascend Wireless, we are a telecom contractor. We're licensed GC and EC. Majority in the Southeast. We're trying to get a stronger foothold in the Southeast. We serve all the main carriers. We're direct with all the main carriers. Verizon is our largest that we provide for right now. But we provide electrical services, LNA, project management, real estate, SIDAC. We do colos, new builds, DAS, small cell. We really have our hands in everything. Generator deployments. We do a lot of that stuff. So we're soup to nuts. I mean, we can go all the way from design to implementation. We're really looking to serve more in the Southeast. Florida's been our kind of been where it all started. We have a strong presence in the Florida. We have an office outside of Nashville, so we're able to do the Tennessee Carolinas. And we are currently in Georgia, Alabama region. I'm starting to kick that off as of this year. You have a really big vision. And it's not only for your company Ascend, but it's for the industry as a whole. And I've heard your name from so many people in the industry lately. We were recently at the South Wireless Summit and people were talking about you and that vision. And I know we're going to get into a little bit more about this today, but you're making a positive impact. Let's just say that, but share part of that vision and then we can open it up throughout the episode. Oh, yes, ma'am. We here to send our main goal is to love our people and love our people well. We're in the people business. What we do is not possible without people. It's not possible without your project managers, construction managers, all the way down to your green guys, your civil, your foreman. Our goal is to really deeply invest in our employees, to really meet them where they're at. We tag this line of win at home where we're focusing our employees at a deeper need. Ascend wants to be more than a paycheck. We want to have a purpose because we feel... We believe that people want a purpose because they were made on purpose for a purpose. We know that everyone has that purpose. We want to be able to say, okay, what is the need for the employee that A, benefits them, their families, but also in turn benefits us as a company? Because truthfully, as the CEO and the leader of the company, my loyalty sits with my employees. Those are the ones that that God's given to me to steward, and I'm responsible for that here to send our vision as leaders is as you're promoted higher, your job title becomes more of a service. Your responsibilities are more of a service to serve our employees. We really focus on developing the employee, letting the employee develop the product, which in turn, they deliver that to the customer and the customer requires us to grow and take on more. Our vision here is to be better. And we know that when we look at our P&L, our largest cost is our people is our payroll. When we look at that, we say, okay, is our greatest asset appreciating or depreciating? So we really focus on that appreciation of our employees. And we want everyone to encounter and have a better experience when they come in contact with Ascend. We really want through the recruiting process, we know that's a touch point for us. The business development side, that's a touch point for us. Our employees, our operations is a touch point for us. We really want every touch point that we have as a company to be a blessing to others. We really believe that we are blessed to be a blessing to this industry. So for us, we want to transform this industry. We want to create a better standard because right now there's really not a really a a detailed standard for the industry. And I feel for us as an industry to continue to create more predictability and consistency in what we do as businesses, but what the carrier can bank on to meet their numbers and their goals is we really have to create a better standard. And that's through training, um, better work practices. So we really focus on that. So some of the unique things that we do as a company is we have a chaplain for all of our offices. We have a service that our employees have another person in their life that they're able to talk with confidentially and work through whatever life's throwing at them. I mean, personally, myself, we all have issues. We all have stuff that we're dealing with personal. If I have stuff that personally I need to be working through, it would be naive for me to think that my employees are not going through that. We provide this service. And if we have employees that are going through things or team members that are going through things, they're able to access this chaplain and there's resources the chaplain can get them involved in. And if there's a cost, it comes back to the company and we pay the cost. Counseling. We do mortgage 101 assistance. We've partnered with a mortgage company that allows our employees to 
once a month engage in what we call Mortgage 101. People that are thinking about getting one or maybe they want to get one or they want to know if they qualify down this mortgage path, they're able to say, hey, I want to buy a house in the next year. We have a company that will take all their finances, look through everything and help them become mortgage worthy so that they can fulfill that goal. I mean, that's our biggest dream here is to see people buy their first home, see their kids born, see their kids graduate high school. Really, we want to create a company where people want to be here forever. And they look at this as their company because I do want to be a CEO that if I was to step away or the Lord reassigns me and calls me somewhere else, that this business just keeps going, that this business isn't about me. And that's what we really look to our employees to help them be successful in life in all stages of life, in their parenting, in their marriage, in their finances, even in the way they invest. We enjoy that. We love diving into that. We can't forget as business owners and CEOs and leaders that they're still the human factor, that we still are dealing with humans. We're dealing with souls. We're dealing with people that have come from different walks of life than we have. They've had different experiences and they have dreams. So we're really investing here lately in listening to our employees' dreams so we can help them get there. Because my dreams and what I want to do are way different than the dreams of some of our employees, but it doesn't make it less important. So we really want to bring people up where they're at a place where they feel like they belong, they thrive. People feel like that their voice is heard and every day that they show up, what they do for the company matters. Then you have a company that's moving forward. You have a company that's growing. And that's our major intent is to focus on how do we invest in our employees. So in turn, they invest in the company so that the goals that we're trying to reach, we're all rowing in the same direction. Well, you have created a new definition of people first. That's for sure. And with so many companies and leaders in telecom with so much on their plate, right? As we continue to deploy wireless, 5G, broadband, as leaders, let's say, how do we prioritize people, profit, and project success? Labor is expensive. Capital now is expensive. Margins are tight. How can companies thrive in these conditions and make sure it all works? I mean, what's working for you here? For us, it's always been this mentality to do more with less. But what we found out that's worked for us is really having an open book for our company. We share our mission, vision, our core values with our employee, but what we also share with them is how they play a part of that. We don't want the culture to exist with just one or two people. We want people to be putting back into that culture as we move forward. For us, we look at better training. We've started organizing and facilitating some blue collar skill trade schools that we're attracting new talent into the industry that never knew the industry was there, but also making them aware of something they didn't know that existed. And also, we work in an industry that you can make a good living. So we talk a lot about a blue collar work, but a white collar lifestyle, trying to restore dignity back into you working with your hands. You can make a great living. You can make a lot of things in your life possible by the talents that God's given you. We have two classes in our country. We've got white class, we've got blue collar class, but we only, we only seem to have one education system for, for both. And what we've learned for most kids that are coming out of high school that are launching into career is college is not an option for them, but there's nothing that they can bank on in their hometown, nothing in their state, wherever they may be. They're looking for opportunities to take, okay, I like to work outside. I like to work at heights or I like to do electrical work. I like to do these things. And we're really pushing them and pulling them into these schools to train them, A, have the hard skills, but also teaching them to have the soft skills. In that, employer retention is going up. And once someone feels that you care deeply about them and they know that they can thrive and they know that they belong where they're at, you have this employee retention, which if you can keep people over time, the cost goes down. We've seen those numbers in margin where they've started creeping up. And for us too, we want to create a better standard for what a crew looks like, what a telecom company looks like and the way it looks. And there's a, and I know there's a lot of business owners out there that want to be a part of that. They just, like me, I didn't know what I didn't know, but I was able to, as I started stepping out and talking to people that have done this and gone before and done it, it's not rocket science, but it helps us keep our vision, our mission and vision in line, what we've committed to our employees in line, but also what we've committed to the carrier or our customer on what they expect for us to deliver. I love hearing about this school and this training center and also the 
the white collar, the blue collar and restoring dignity to blue collar roles and all of this. And it's so timely because what we really need industry wide, especially with the, you know, with the bead funding coming and continuing to deploy 5G and all the resources that we need that are laborers, that are field techs, right? And letting people know, look, this is an amazing opportunity that you can get in, you can grow. And look, in your case, Will, going from a field tech, tower tech, to the CEO and owner of a company. I mean, that's possible, right? It is. And one thing that I would say to encourage people that are listening that maybe you're trying to figure out their path, there is no one path. There's no one way to get there. There's not the ABC steps to become the CEO or what it is that you desire to be or you dream to be. But I would say, take my path and the story that I have here. And there's millions of stories that are like this. There's a gentleman that I know that owns a chip manufacturer and he didn't even graduate high school, but he took his skills. He knew what he could do. And every day he just showed up and showed up and showed up and learned and gave it all he got and really left the rest of it in the Lord's hands. But there's no one path to get to where you want to go. I think people need to hear and understand that don't be embarrassed about the talents that you have today. If it's you're a tower tech or you're at the bottom or you're blue collar, don't be embarrassed about that. Things in this world don't exist if we didn't have blue collar workers. The buildings we're sitting in, the roads we're driving on, the cars that we drive, the things that, I mean, even the groceries that get delivered to now to your home where you don't have to go to the grocery store, it all starts with someone that was doing it with their hands. And so we want to shine light on that to restore dignity to that because the white collar class needs the blue collar and the same way. And the blue collar needs the white collar. Instead of uh, us versus them, or we have the curtain between the sea level and the operations, it wasn't meant to be that way. And once you have a team that can collaborate and has that chemistry, there's nothing that's going to stand in your way with what you can get done and the possibilities that are out there for you, for you personally and for your business. Will, can you go into a little bit more detail around your company culture? I know you've talked about it quite a bit so far and all the, the programs and what you do for your employees, but in any other initiatives or values, what is it like to work for Ascend? We have a tagline first that says it's not business, it's personal. I've always struggled with the tagline or the line that people use like, hey man, it's just business. I just felt like that was an excuse to do something that morally people knew wasn't right. We talk about that all the time, that it's not business, it's personal. And for us, because of our faith and our convictions, we can't separate that. And we weren't designed to separate who we were with our work. That's not the way we were created. That's not what we were meant to be. When we think about it and when we look at it, one of our core values is empathy. We live in a world that lacks empathy. Just globally, we lack empathy. We don't look at people the same way we used to. We don't look at the human soul and we don't talk about these things because in this world, we are geared about around our schedule, our agenda, our goals, the things that we need to really start focusing on. And I was reading something the other day talking about givers and takers and just the giver mentality and the taker mentality. And sometimes we're pursuing this, the American dream has been hijacked by takers. When we start having that giver mindset, we start thinking others first. That's something we say a lot here to send. We're an others first company. We're going to put people's thoughts before ours. And I tell our team all the time, the most valuable thing that we learned in life, we learned in kindergarten. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself and put others before yourself. And the greatest thing for your soul is to put others first, is to do something for someone, to be able to stand in that gap. And we talk about there's times in everyone's life where we've had someone that's done something for us that we couldn't do ourselves. And even in the country that we live in, the freedoms we experience came at the price of someone else's blood. We think about those things all the time of, okay, how do we focus down the road and we focus outward and not inward? When we talk about empathy, we talk about standing beside your brother or your sister and really shouldering the things that are going on in their life, but also shouldering what goes on in business. And then we talk about generosity. We talk about we want to be a company that leads with generosity. And mostly when people think about generosity, they think about, oh, money. But no, when you're thinking about generosity, when we want to lead strictly with generosity, 
It's more than money. It's our possessions, our titles, our status, our the fame and all that stuff. It's more than that. We look at it and say, okay, how do we take these things that we've been given? We've been given a platform in business. How do we take this platform and we move it forward so that we can actually change people's lives? What we do in this industry, in the telecom industry, all we do is to connect people. That's all we do. When we're running fiber and we're doing all this work, it's for people to connect because communication is absolutely important. We were created to communicate and connect with one another. We take a lot of pride in that and what we do, knowing that we are really the people in the middle that are making whatever the carrier is trying to do and the end user, we're connecting the two so that you can take those calls when one of your family members is sick or you can reach your kids that are growing up and out of the house on their birthday and FaceTime and all these things that were created didn't happen if we didn't exist. We take a lot of pride in that. We talk about generosity and giving back and what that means. Because if you have more than $800 in your bank account today, you've got more money than 80% of the world. And we lose that human factor. Again, we lose the reality because we always see more. We always want more. We're striving for more because most leaders and executives, they're driven. We're just driven people. We become accelerators and accumulators. We see it, we go get it. We see it, we go get it. And I think what we have to do and what we've had to do as a team is really slow down and step back and say, okay, what's the main reason Ascend exists? What's the main reason that X company exists? We get an opportunity and we're the vessel to provide a path for people for their career and for their life. We talk about that a lot in our culture about generosity. And one big thing to us is dignity. I mean, we just have to get better at who we are as people. I mean, the industry was known as not having a driver's license, not having these certain things, this crazy industry, but I don't believe it. I mean, this is a highly skilled technical industry. You can't just come off of the street and day one do what these guys do. Teaching our people that they can, I tell our tower climbers, our foremen, They can be as professional as they want to be. If they want to wear a collared shirt to climb the tower, I will provide a collared shirt for them to climb the tower. They can be as professional as they want to because I want them to take pride in what they do. I want them to know that what they are doing is far greater than what they've been told. And creating that in our culture and talking about that really helps people get from what I call off the bench and get in the game. So who is Will Grendel, the leader? What principles guide you? My faith is really what grounds me in this, knowing that at some point, I call myself the interim CEO. And people are like, what do you mean you're leaving? (laughs) No, I'm the CEO today, but at some point, someone else is going to be the CEO of this company. Someone else is going to own this far beyond, hopefully, when I leave this earth. My faith has always grounded me to say, people matter. I mean, the biggest command is love God and love others. And as I see what goes on in the world, I see all this craziness like everybody else does. We have forgot to love one another. What I love about my job is I get to love on people. I get the opportunity to step in and be a part of what's going on in people's lives because I have an amazing team here that keeps the operations going, the finance going, the HR going, business development. God has really brought amazing teammates that we have here. My goal is when people look at Ascend, they don't see me. They just see a place where people are loved, people are cared about. So for me, my faith has driven me into saying, okay, I know that I'm going to be responsible for what God's given me to steward and, and my wife and my kids and the things in my family. But besides sleeping, working is the other thing that we do the most. And sometimes, most of us, we probably work more than we sleep. But We spend so much time together with these people and always tell people, and I have a couple of friends, some pastors around at the local church. And I said, the amazing thing about me versus you is people have a choice to come see you on Sunday. They don't have a choice to come see me on Monday through Friday because they're at work. They're coming to work every day. These people are walking through our door. Everyone, even me, you want to feel valued and every life has value. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people that would argue that every life has value. For me, as I go back and say, what legacy do I want to leave? I want to leave a legacy that when people say every time that I needed something, he was there. Every time that 
I brought something to the table, whether it be business or personal, they truthfully did help me take it to the next step. For me, I always look at this, the spectrum from left to right, and people are traveling in life. They're on different levels of that spectrum. But our goal at Ascend is every day to help individuals take one more step forward into who they are, where they want to go, whether that be personally, professionally, in their faith, just helping them take one more step further in that journey of where they want to accomplish and what they want to accomplish in their life. But to me, something that I've focused on here lately is if we want to change our lives, if we want to change the world, if we want to change our relationship and we want to change our attitude, we have to change our words. So true. Words can build up and words can destroy. And we value and we talk a lot about how do we talk to one another? We have a rule here to send that says you have to act your age. If you're two years old, you can act too. But if you're 45, you got to act 45. And most of that comes just with us in the words that we do. And we always talk about nothing opens doors like the word please. Nothing mends fences like the word sorry. And nothing builds bridges like the word thanks. If we can remember that as a leadership team and the way that we talk to our customers, the way we talk to our employees, the way we talk to each other, we talk about transforming this industry. We can really start transforming our little corner in the industry by the way that we talk, the words that we use. We really focus on that. We lead from a position of transparency and vulnerability because you can't fool people. I mean, people can see right through this, especially people that have been in business and stuff for like for a while. We want to lead with transparency. We want to make sure we always say, if you are going to say it, you better do it. If you're not going to do it, don't say it. We're very focused on how do we do that and how do we care for people a lot deeper and, and something that I've been convicted with lately with our team. And I said, and we talked about it earlier this week, I said, why do we live our life like we're going to live forever? Mm -hmm. And what makes us so sure that we have the time? We all think about, I'm going to leave a legacy later in my career, or I'm going to have a succession plan later in my career, or I'll do that when I have the money, or I'll do this. We plan things like we're going to live forever. Well, the reality is at some point, we're going to be taken from this earth. That's it. That's going to be it for us of the impact that we leave on this earth. For us, as we live on that day to day, what is it that we need to do today that we can continue to push this forward? Because there's many frustrations in this industry and in business that are out of our control. How do we focus on the things that we can control? And how do we mitigate the things we can't control? Those are things that we focus on. And for us as leaders that we really want to change because we really do want to make an impact. We really do want to change it because we're a people over profit and the profit comes mindset of a company. Gosh, I'm just present to the culture you've created and your team has created and everything you've said today about your mission and your goals and your focus and people and loving people and your faith and just all of it. And all I can think about is the future of Ascend and where you're going. I mean, with all of this in place, imagine the retention and the engagement and the way that people are going to be excited every day and feel so good about what they're doing. I want to know what is next for Ascend? Like, tell me where you're going next. Yeah, we're really focused on, we talk about it a lot. We want to focus on being better where we are today throughout the Southeast. We want to focus on better. And then our customers will demand that we're bigger. If we can be better at what we do, because there is always a better way. Everything's changing day to day in this industry the way we do life. I mean, the way we thought of people thought about work in 2020, they think about it way differently in 2023. As we continue to get better at what we do, we, our customers will demand that we be bigger. We're trying to really solidify a great stable footprint throughout the Southeast because that's where we started and, and where we feel we have the assets now. But our goal over the next seven years is to really have a, a nationwide presence, which doesn't mean we're going to be in every state across the nation. But we want to be able to grow and help our partners and our customers reach the goals they need. So we're going to grow with them. But we are really trying to make a push over the next seven years. If you'd asked me this question four years ago, I never had any interest to being big. I just, I didn't want to be big. And I don't want to be big today. But I was really convicted by a mentor of mine said, you know what, what you are doing today 
and the impact you're making on 60 people and the mindset that these 60 people are having to go throughout the industry. Just think if you had a thousand people that were doing this, just think Mm -hmm. if you had 2000 people doing this and being fed like this and changed like this. And think about as you talk about these things and go throughout the industry, think of the other business owners and leaders and say, you know what? I've always wanted to do something like this. I just didn't know how to, because that was me three years ago. I didn't know how. Those are the things that I think, okay, what is a sin going to look like? Ultimately for us, we want to glorify God in everything that we do. We want people to know that they're loved. We want to know that there's a God that loves them. God has a plan for them and that God has a purpose for them. They were no mistake. Doesn't matter what their parents tell them. (laughs) They weren't a mistake. (laughs) They were created on purpose for a purpose. And we believe that coming and being a part of our team and connecting with our team and, and hitching your wagon with a sin, we can pursue that purpose because I think there's a lot of people in this industry that really want to see something different than what the industry is today. And we see what the last 10 to 15 years have been like in the industry. And we know that we can't continue that same path. We know that we have to change. We want to be the forefront of pushing that, but we also want to invite other business owners and CEOs and carriers and whoever, even to Nate and all these people that are facilitated to say, okay, let's all bound together and push forward to make sure that we lead this industry better than we found it. Gosh, drop the mic. This is a message I think every single person listening needs to hear and could have gotten something from this message. And I agree with you, Will. I think that this, the industry is shifting and this this, you know, your heart, your, you know, the, your vision and the way that you see the world and a company, right, that you're creating is what we all need to do right now with the changing workforce. And it's becoming more human and people have challenges around mental health and they're bringing their whole selves to work. And we need to be able to help the whole person. There's so much value here. I'm going to listen to this over and over again. And I just get so inspired when I talk to you, Will. And I want to thank you for for taking a stand, who you are, your heart, and your love for people. And you're just taking a stand for it and really inviting us all as leaders to say, hey, let's all do this together. And I just find that so inspiring. So I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's just been fantastic. And it's a ple- really an honor to know you. Well, thank you, Ms. Carrie. And I appreciate what you're doing and forging ahead in the industry with your space and really giving us a, another person, another avenue to start doing things different, to know that change this industry for the better. Well, tell me, how can we find out more about Ascend Wireless Networks? Absolutely. We have our website there, www.ascendwirelessnetworks.com is a great stop for us. We're rebuilding it. So it's actually going to be a fun website that is a little more interactive and just a a good touch of who we are, of our mission, vision, and core values. So we have that. You can always reach out to me directly at will.grindle at Ascend Wireless Networks. But then we're we're across all the social media platforms at Ascend Wireless Networks. And we're really just trying to invite people in on the story that God's writing here. And we're also inviting people to, to say, okay, where is my part in this? I've always been a firm believer that when you hear something and you know something and you don't do something about it, that's on you. I can't be responsible for the things that I don't know. But what I worry about more than anything is the things that I do know that I'm not mm-hmm. doing. Mm-hmm. So I just, I really invite people to have that Peter mindset to say, it's time to get out of the boat, get both feet on the water, get off the bench, and let's go do what we know we can do. But let's do it together because only one person doing it, it only can grow as big as that one person. But as they say, a strand of three cords is not easily broken. Well, let's do it together, Will. I'm in. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Thank you so much. Gosh, this has been fantastic. Thanks for coming on the show. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You take care. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for listening to another informative episode of 5G Talent Talk, brought to you by RCR Wireless News, Telecom Careers, and Broadstaff Talent Solutions. As we advance into the future, we promise to bring you the resources you need to navigate this ever-changing landscape of 5G to help you attract, retain, and engage people in this new world of work. To access the show notes or leave a review, visit broadstaffglobal.com. Until next time.